Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today's video, I am going to be sharing with you some of my homeschool regrets, so stick around. Yes, I am sharing things I regret thus far in our homeschool journey. Um, now, I will say, you're not going to find curriculum regrets here because to be quite honest, I really don't have them. Um, I mean, sure, there are things that we have tried that haven't worked for us, but it's not that I necessarily regret those. I think that's just part of the process uh, of, you know, learning and growing and kind of figuring out what works for you and what works for your child or your children. So uh, you're not going to find that here. Um, however, there is going to be a playlist link in the description below because this is a collab with Yuri from the Chan 7. I'll have her channel linked below also. So if you are looking for um, other regrets uh, that may even include kind of some curriculum, if you're looking for that kind of information, maybe taking some of those thoughts um, and considering those that would be a place to go. And also check out and see what some of the other moms regret. Uh, and, you know, kind of a learn from our mistakes sort of thing, maybe, hopefully, I don't know. Um, so I am gonna share, I actually have four regrets to share with you. And I want to say this before I get into these regrets. These are the things that shape us and make us who we are, right? So these things are not necessarily, I don't want to say that they're, they're not bad, right? Um, and some things are hard, but hard does not equal bad. So don't think that there is an eagle flying. I just saw it leave the tree behind my house or over here. And it just grabbed a snake off of the tree. Oh my gosh. Okay, I have to leave that in the video. That was so cool. It's going back. Going back to the tree it got it from. Oh my goodness, you guys. It's so cool. Where is it? Okay, no, it just went past the tree. It's going away now. That was the coolest thing I have ever seen. Okay, I'm gonna, I gotta take a second. Collect myself here. Okay. <laughs> I think, I think we're back. Um, regrets. Okay, we are talking about homeschool regrets. And I was telling you guys that these, I do not think of these things as negative things. I do not think of these things as, I wish it wouldn't have happened. Okay, because again, like I said, it are it, it is these things that help us grow, shape who we are, guide us, direct us, all of that stuff. So, these are not things that I dwell on. And quite honestly, it took me a little while to come up with things because I just, I just feel like this part of life, you, it ebbs and flows and some things uh, go really well. Some things don't. And you know, you either win or you learn. Right. And so that's just kind of how I have looked at these things. So that's kind of a little disclaimer before we get into my four homeschool regrets. Okay. These first two, are not necessarily specific to homeschool, but they kind of are. My first one, not taking homeschool and my role as a homeschool parent, mom, seriously, right? It's, I think for me, it was basically, there was no real transition. I, there was no, it, Becoming a homeschool mom was just a continuation of raising a young child, right? I have been a stay-at-home mom since my daughter was six. Or not since she was six. She's six now. Since she was six months old. Um, and then prior to that, from when I was pregnant with her, um, I was able to work at home. And this, I could go into like a whole big story here about all of that. Um, but basically, I had no intention of being a stay-at-home mom. Uh, and then 
that situation happened and I was like, okay, great. Then I'll just deal with this and we will make this work until she goes to school. And then it got closer to the time for her to go to school. And I'm like, why am I sending my baby to school? I need to be home with her. I've taught her how to walk. I've taught her how to tie her, not tie her shoes. I've taught her how to eat. I've taught her all of these other things. Why can't I teach her how to read? Why can't I teach her how to do basic math and then get somebody else to help her learn um, higher math? Cause that's not gonna be me. Why can't I teach her about birds and whales? And you know, so it just was like a natural continuation. And so it was very easy to just not take it seriously, to not realize the work that I was doing here inside my home because there, I don't know. I don't, I really hope you guys are, are kind of understanding where I'm coming from here. Cause it's, it's kind of hard to articulate. Um, it just, I just didn't take it serious. It was like, I just wake up and you know, reading a book was just part of our day. And, you know, like I, I didn't prepare myself for those things. Um, and so it was very easy to just make it very lax and feel like it just wasn't important is really what I'm getting at. And once I realized in my mind, this is my job. This is what God has designed and created me for in this moment. And why do I not take that seriously? Why do I not wake up in the morning and say, this is the day the Lord has made and he has given it to me. And what does he want me to accomplish in this day? It might just be laundry and reading a couple of books and going over a couple of math problems. But like, that's what he... That's what he's having me do today, you know? And so once I, once I got that in my mind, I kind of changed my perspective from this is just what we're doing to like, this is what I was made to do in this season. I found myself like wanting to get ready for the day. Um, I am doing my hair more often. I'm putting a little makeup on more often. I'm getting out of my pajamas more often. Not every day, but you know, I'm just, I am outwardly expressing the way that my heart has changed towards my role here at home as a wife, as a mother, and as a homeschool parent. Number two, and I think this will be one that I, I think that you'll kind of see across the board maybe, um, or at least maybe some other people, I hope, I hope I'm not the only one um, that expects perfection. Uh, not only from my daughter, but no, not necessarily from, well, kind of. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna walk through this together. Expecting perfection in my daughter's attitude and and in her behavior not necessarily in her work right i knew not to expect that she was going to read these five words perfectly every time but i expected her to have a good attitude about reading those words and i can't do that because i don't have a perfect attitude which then also led me to believe or led me to expect myself to have a perfect attitude and so if I can have a perfect attitude, why can't she? And you know, and it just spirals because we are not perfect humans. We are not perfect people. And I, you can't do that. You can't do that. But I have also been on the other end of that where I have super low expectations. And so anything that gets accomplished is great. But I don't think that's positive either. I feel like you have to have some sort of minimum expectation. These are the things that we require every day. Anything above that is fantastic. If we don't quite meet all of those, that's okay too because tomorrow is another chance at those. But I really think there has to be some kind of, of minimum, whatever that looks like for you. For me, it's um, making sure the kitchen gets clean. It's making sure that we get some type of reading in, making sure that we get some type of writing or a spelling or even just a handwriting page, something. Yeah, unless it's like a designated time that, you know, that we have off. But 
just those, you have to have some kind of minimum requirements. Otherwise, I felt unfulfilled. I felt like every day was just a wash. We were just not getting anything accomplished because I had such so I had such low expectations because I just got off of this this feeling of needing everything to be done every day. So finding that happy middle ground, I feel like is really, really helpful. Um, and then of course, like I said, if, if you have days where you're just getting everything done and everything's really great, fantastic. Love that, celebrate those, enjoy those, but know that tomorrow is gonna be a different day and it's probably going to go differently. Okay, number three is I wish that I, and let me kind of preface this to here for anybody who may be new. My daughter is almost seven, so we still, we still have time here. However, one of the things I regret is not putting a little bit more emphasis and focus on house things. Because again, we've been through this low expectation and super high expectation and you know, all of that kind of stuff. And so not, I didn't put much emphasis on, you need to make sure you wake up every morning and your bed gets made. You need to make sure you, you, you know, clean up after dinner, you know, like those, those types of chores, those being part of a household. Um, and I, th I think maybe this, this could be a little bit more of a struggle for people who have only children and please feel free to comment below nicely um, if you have different thoughts or feelings because I only have one child so I don't know what multiple children um, you know in the home looks like but I've seen a lot of suggestions of like you have like a family power hour where everybody kind of you know, after lunch, everybody gets together and, and is in charge of cleaning up certain spaces or certain chores. And I love that idea. However, that it kind of just doesn't, doesn't really work when you have an only child because it's just me and her and it's always just me and her. And so it's, I don't know, the dynamic is, is just different. And so I wish that I would have put a little bit more priority and focus on that. Um, you know, before now, because now I'm like, you are almost seven years old, you can help me with certain things and you can do these certain things. And as I've, I've suggested that and I've been like, no, you can make a bagel, you know how to make a bagel. I'm realizing like, but does she really know how to make a bagel? She does now because, you know, I've helped her with those things. And so I'm, I am focusing on those and putting those things into practice now. I just wish that maybe I would have started that a little bit sooner with her and allowed her to have a little bit more of that independence um that way it makes things it just makes things a little bit easier when she can be doing one thing and taking care of of things and i can be focusing on something else or doing something else i feel like it just makes our day go a little bit smoother and she feels included right she feels like she's part of of things that are happening here she's not just sitting by the wayside waiting for mom to give her direction or give her to do, you know, give her something to do, she can kind of take ownership and do that herself, which then I think would transition over as she gets a little bit older, transition over to school because ultimately that's what I would love for her. I would love for me to just, you know, set expectations for the, the day or the week or whatever. And she just kind of take ownership and do that on her own. Um, along with things in the house. So yeah, I, I wish that I would have kind of realized that and, and put a little bit more emphasis and focus on that when she was a little bit younger, obviously within, you know, age range, right? Like I don't expect her to be making dinners at three years old or anything, but just kind of easing her into those and doing things um, at an age that was appropriate a, a little bit sooner. And my number fourth regret, and this is a fairly new, and I, I haven't really thought about this. I mean, I have a little bit, like as things have come up, I've been like, man, I wish I would have planned for that better. Um, But I saw something and I could not tell you where it was or who wrote it or any of that kind of stuff. I, I guess maybe I probably should have written it down. Um, 
but I didn't because, you know, I just skimmed by it. I'm like, man, I never really thought of that. But I saw something about, um, I don't even know what it was, like tips for homeschooling parents or something like that. And one of the one of the things mentioned was celebrate everything, make everything a celebration. And while I, kind of, I don't necessarily I don't necessarily think that is something that I regret um, because I feel like we've done a good job of celebrating certain things and, and things that we find important that needs to be celebrated. Mine is more of, I wish that I would have celebrated the holidays, like those fun little holidays when she was a little bit younger and could make those really fun, super, super cheap. Like I'm talking like Valentine's Day. I wish we, I would have been in, more intentional in like a cute little holiday craft. It would have taken us 15 minutes when she was three or four years old. But like that just would have been such a cute thing for us to start then. And then as she's gotten older, kind of just keep that tradition and keep that momentum going. And I am starting now to implement some of those things. Um, so again, she's still young, you know, I still have time to, to do those. I just wish that I would have started it a little bit earlier because I feel like it, it just would have been so fun then, you know, you can come up with, there's all kinds of cute little things out there for the holidays. And I don't just mean Thanksgiving and Christmas and Easter. Like, of course, we've always done Thanksgiving, Christmas and Easter, but like St. Patrick's Day is, is a good example and um, Valentine's Day and Earth Day and, you know, just those fun little things that you don't necessarily think about, but we have an opportunity as homeschool parents to make those cool, fun things. And I just wish that maybe I would have started that a little bit sooner um, and gotten to do a little bit more of those like fun, crafty, hands-on things. And I think that is it for my homeschool regrets. Don't forget to check out the playlist in the description below. Obviously, you can hear from lots of other homeschool moms on their thoughts and feelings. I am going to apparently go back to bird watching. I need to get my binoculars, although I think it's gone now. That was super, super cool. I'm not editing that out, so you guys will get to experience that with me just without being able to see it. But Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I will talk to you soon.